um, you wouldn't be here tonight if uh, you hadn't at some point in your life, um, or in the last couple of years, like myself, um, looked at an incredibly inspiring TED video. Four years ago, that's what happened to me. I looked at a TED video and I thought, man, I can do that. Um, and that's part of the reason I'm here tonight to speak to you about the mobile revolution and the cusp that I believe Africa is on at this moment in time. So in Africa, as you probably know, there are more than a billion people currently living. Most of them are poor. Most of them live in resource-constrained areas. Um, most of them do not have access to basic services, medical services. But yet we have, on the other side, a real miracle. There are 450 million phones currently that we can address in Africa. So that means we've got a really low-cost solution to communicate on an individual basis to people living in Africa. So these two things together really provide us with an incredible opportunity. We've got a billion people in a really poor continent, and on the other side, we've got this amazing technology that we can, for very low cost, communicate with them. And that's why I believe that we can build services that are truly transformational, that will change the face of the developing world. And the type of people that we're talking to are people like Tandi, and that's not a real name. Um, she visits a portal that we launched about seven months ago um, in South Africa. And uh, she's 19 years old, and she lives in Kuzulu Natal, and um, she finished school last year. Um, she's currently unemployed, but she does have a mobile phone. She does v visit the mobile internet, and her mobile phone is, a, is the central piece of technology through which she gets information and how she connects to the world. If you put these things together, that's why I believe Africa is a hotbed of mobile innovation in Africa. And you can already see the type of technology that's been developed here in the last couple of years. Things like, for instance, please call me. Now, all of you have received those annoying little messages, right? Um, it's great to explain this to a South African audience because everyone knows what a please call me is. Um, <laughs> did you know that uh, 24 million of those are being sent per day currently in South Africa? <laughs> and that's, that's a South African invention. So it was invented right here in South Africa, and it allows people to communicate with each other at absolutely no cost. If you run out of air time, like a lot of people do in Africa, 95% of people living in Africa are on prepaid, not on postpaid. So you run out of air time, and you use Please Call Me to communicate with your friends. And um, currently, you can only send six of them per day. That's the reason we're only sending 24 million per day. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't know how many it would be. And I'll get back to this technology and some of the interesting things you can do with that. m which is also homegrown, developed in Kenya, it's a mobile banking solution, extremely low cost. It allows you to transfer money from one end of Kenya to the other end of Kenya where there's absolutely no banking infrastructure. And then a technology that I believe is being built right here in Stellenbosch, um, Mixit, absolutely awesome instant messaging program that you can message for probably 100 times cheaper than SMSs because the network operators are charging us too much to communicate. So the question is, how do we develop the next generation of mobile technologies that will change the face of the developing world. And I think the answer, Muhammad Yunus had a really great answer to that. And he said, um, we can do well by doing good. So not only do we want to build things that make people's lives better, that transform Africa, we also want to make money at the same time. And I believe that if you build valuable services for the base of the pyramid, for the poorest people in Africa, that you can make money, you can do well and do good. So a couple of years ago, there's a, a Bikichus, uh, please call me, uh, one of the 24 million in Zulu. And we realized, hang on, um, if so many are being sent per day and the network operators are using it to advertise their services, surely we can do something else with that, with that space. And um, with a bunch of other cool people at PopTech and Frog Design and iTeach, we came up with a solution called Pro Project Basilu Leke. And we went to MTN and we asked them, give us some of those please call me's, and they complied. And uh, we've been sending a million of those per day for the last two years. Um, and the purpose to which we put them was HIV AIDS, the biggest problem currently facing South Africa. Now that red dot there in the middle, that's South Africa. Even though we're a small country, as you probably know, we've got the highest percentage of people that are HIV positive. But unfortunately, we also have the highest absolute number of people that suffer from HIV AIDS in the world. On the positive side, we have an absolutely amazing IRB program that's being rolled out in South Africa. It's completely free if you're positive, but you have to know that you're positive. And the problem is that only 20% of South Africans currently are being tested. So it's really a problem of information. How do we get this to the poorest people in South Africa? How do we convince them against stigma, against all the other problems, that 
yes, you can get free treatment. Please call me. So we're sending a million of those per day, and here's an example in English. Actually positive and scared to tell your partner for help, please call the AIDS help line on 0800 123 232. Now we send these out mostly in vernacular, and of course the um, vernaculars are more, uh, we get much higher yields than we get for, for English. And look at the results. We sent 500 million messages in seven languages in the last two years. We've generated 1.5 million calls to uh, the National AIDS Helpline. As a matter of fact, we crashed the National AIDS Helpline when we launched the service the first time. That is probably maybe one of the problems with Please Call Me. It's like a shotgun. There's no control. You just send a <laughs> lot of messages. But this has been proven so um, effective that we're now rolling this out um, in the rest of Africa and Nigeria. We've run a malaria program where we've got over 160,000 responses in seven days. And I think the beauty of this project is that we get to communicate to the people that need it most, that have the least access to information. So that makes us think, well, if we could do that with such a simple technology like Please Call Me, it's homegrown, then what else could we do that's more interesting? Obviously, there's a need to get information from our audiences. So we developed Young Africa Live. It's a mobile portal, and it allows um, 18 to 24 year olds to find out about uh, information that's important to them, about sex and love and relationships, and um, of course, HIV AIDS. But if you, can't, you can't call a portal like that the HIV AIDS portal, because then nobody would go to it. And in any case, only 20% of South Africans even know their status. So it's a celebrity bug for youth. And the type of stories we run, we run about four stories per day, and they're all about celebrities and the things they get up to. And you can see there, Justin just won't marry. He's a commitment phobe. And um, <laughs> we run a, a 200-word story on, on Justin. And then we use those stories to generate comments around topics that are important. And um, to give an idea of the type of stories that are interesting to our audience, dating tips, that's our number one story. 134,000 views. And that's now in seven months. Um, but also a bit more serious, quite a star on a rap charge, on a rape charge, sorry. Rape charge. <laughs> what is a rap charge? <laughs> uh, sex life. Okay, there's some of these stories are quite lurid, but we are appealing to a young audience. Um, circumcision, and this is specifically to, uh, to, uh, around the HIV AIDS topic, actually. What makes you gay? Now, what's really interesting is, um, um, South Africa's got one of the most progressive constitutions in the world, yet we run, ran a story like that, and we had a huge outpouring of homophobia on the, on the portal. So it's really interesting what you believe about your country um, and what's really true. And then my, my personal favorite story, um, in the first week that we launched, um, we actually launched on World AIDS Day on the 1st of December, um, Tiger Woods got up to some no good. <laughs> And he's a risky cheater. We, 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 we launched this platform with absolutely no um, budget at all, and with absolutely no media budget. Um, we really built it, and we hoped that they would come, and they did come. Over 452,000 comments in seven months. Over 2,500 comments per story. Over 76,000 views per day. This portal is now doing more traffic than the uh, most popular youth portals in South Africa. So what are they interested in? So most of our teenagers have very little to other media. Um, they're poorly educated around coming of age topics. The only place to talk about controversial issues. Um, they're grossly inexperienced in matters of the heart. Well, I mean, who isn't really? Um, <laughs> privacy and anonymity. Questions can be posted without repercussions. I think that's really important as well. So you can um, uh, place a, a, a handle on your name and you can post comments but they're completely anonymous and the, and the audience can really come back with, um, with help. And really interesting, even though it's a South African portal, we have globally shared um, identity and topics around love, heartache, sexual awareness. These are really all the same and the type of stories we run are really all the same. And I think the really interesting thing is they massively appreciate the community created around the comments and the anonymous advice specifically. So two weeks ago, and I thought, just to show you a bit more of a concrete example, two weeks ago we ran a story, it's really serious in South Africa, which is it's rape, and uh, I won't read you the entire story, but it's, uh, it's about uh, three girls that, that were raped um, in the Eastern Cape, and um, 
really at the end of the story, we said, if you suspect a child is being abused by somebody in a position of trust, help the child by reporting the incident. Speak to the child's parents and teachers or call the child line. And what we realized as reading these stories, and I think that was what really shocked me, um, we developed this portal to help people, and then um, Tandi, who I spoke to in the beginning, posted this comment. Guys, thanks so much for your advice. I think I have to go to the social worker or tell my mum because I can't go with this for long. Now is time my uncles face the miserable and dirty actions they've done to me. I love you so much, guys. And then the community responded. Zolani, you must go to the social workers and tell them, don't keep quiet because it will stress you out for your life. They will help you. They threaten to kill me if I tell anyone I really hate them with all my heart because now I'm suffering. You may be afraid, but you have to reveal this secret. You don't know how many goals they did before you. And of course, you have to moderate these type of things. Um, so there's one example, need to talk to someone about rape or sexual violence, call the Step, Stop Gender Violence Helpline. We've had so many of these things pour out. And, and, and to some extent, when you read these stories, you realize that a lot of the people that are on this portal only realize that they are being abused when they read these stories. Um, they are going through these experiences without really any support. And this is the, the only support that they have at the moment. So what have we learned? You can build communities and generate immense traffic, but firstly, it has to be free or it has to be near free. In other words, nobody pays to update their Facebook profile. You can't be charging people on every SMS if you want to build, uh, build a community. So it has to be free. Secondly, it has to be universally accessible on as many phones as you can possibly do. Not on the high-end phones. It has to work on the low-end phones as well. And finally, it has to be relevant. Build something as a value to the end users. I'd like to conclude um, by just maybe wishing that um, some of you are also as inspired as I was a couple of years back and that um, we'll hopefully see the next generation of uh, mobile um, solutions coming from somebody in this audience. Thank you. Thank you.